الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We continue with the ninth hadith in the compilation of the 40 ahadith of Imam Nawawi رحمه الله This particular hadith talks about submission to revelation Submission to that which Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم and Allah سبحانه وتعالى have revealed to us and not asking unnecessary questions and probing too deep into the revelation. An Abi Hurairah radiyallahu an Abdurrahman ibn Sakhr qal sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul ma nahaytukum anhu fajtanibuhu wa ma amartukum bihi fa'tu min fa'tu minhu ma istata'tum fa innama ahlaka alladhina min qablikum kathratu masailihim wa ikhtilafuhum ala anbiya'ihim Rawahul Bukhari wa Muslim. So in this hadith, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu, whose name was Abdul Rahman bin Sakhar radiyallahu anhu narrates, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whatever I have forbidden you, forbidden for you, avoid it. And whatever I have ordered you to do, do as much of it as you can. For verily, it was only the excessive questioning and the disagreeing with their prophets that destroyed the nations who were before you. So whatever I have forbidden for you, stay away from it. Whatever I have ordered you to do, do as much of it as you can, as you are able to. Why? Because the excessive questioning and disagreeing with their prophets is what destroyed the nations who were before you. And this hadith comes in Bukhari and Muslim. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu an was a famous Sahabi and he memorized and narrated approximately 5,374 ahadith. He accepted Islam in the seventh year after Hijrah, but he spent most of his time in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during the last years of his life, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life, to such an extent that Abu Hurairah radiallahu an was extremely poor. But despite that, he spent his time pursuing the knowledge of deen in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He passed away in the 57th year after Hijrah, aged 78. This particular hadith is warning us against excessive questioning. Because excessive questioning is what destroyed the previous nations. The background to this hadith is that on one occasion, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded the Sahaba radiallahu anhum to perform hajj. And somebody asked the question that must we perform hajj? Is it compulsory upon us every year? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept silent, which was often his habit when there was a question that he perhaps didn't want to answer or he felt that the answer should not be given. He would remain silent. The person asked again, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa remained silent. The person asked a third time that should we perform hajj every year? Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied to him and said to him that you should not be asking this question because if you ask it and I say that yes, you have to perform it every year, then it would become extremely difficult for you. So we are encouraged not to argue with the people of knowledge, the, 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 the Quran and the Sunnah that has been revealed. Of course, we need to understand it, but we should not continue to probe and ask questions uh, in such a manner that we are overstepping the bounds. Imam Malik rahmatullahi alayhi used to say that arguing, that is unnecessary disputing and wrangling about knowledge removes the noor of knowledge from a man's heart. The light of knowledge is removed by unnecessary disputing and wrangling. So we should not get this wrong. We need to ask for clarification where it is required so that we understand the deen, but unnecessarily disputing and wrangling about knowledge, this removes the nur and is what we are being warned against. Imam Awza'i mentions that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to deprive his servant of the blessing of knowledge, he puts questions on his tongue which are designed to cause difficulty to the people of knowledge, that is the ulama. I think they are the people with the least knowledge. That is, these people who are 
asking these unnecessary questions. So we should avoid this and we should avoid arguing with the ulama and the people of knowledge unnecessarily and trying to probe too much into uh, uh, technical issues. This is what destroyed the people of the past. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to understand and practice. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.